Right. We put the horse before the egg. We need to decide our policy, our strategy, and our tactics. Only then can we begin recruiting people for the revolution. I want you to spend the weekend thinking. Thinking long. Thinking hard. The cause is all important, all embracing. I want you to give up all thought of personal pleasure this weekend. <laughs> I want you to have only one thought in your minds. I want you to devote all your energies to the cause, the taking over of Britain on behalf of senior citizens and the occupationally rejected. Geraldine, I believe in striking while the bird in the hand is hot. I didn't get where I am today without striking while the bird in the hand is hot. Will you come to bed with me? No, Bunny. Are you ever going to? That's five dinners and two lunches I've bought you. <laughs> That is the most terrible, crass, insensitive thing that any man has ever said to me. And that includes Mr. Venison. <laughs> I never want to see you again. You're a monster. I didn't get where I am today without knowing a monster when I see one. <laughs> How are you? In mortal dread. Banishing the enemy, no problem. Seriously injured in battle, equilibrium barely dented. Not that I ever had those experiences, damn it. Chap reaches puberty, blasted peace breaks out. <laughs> but the point is, no terrors if I had had. At Monday morning, revealing our thoughts, me as leader expected to go first, show decisive leadership, quaking in my boots. Reason? Haven't got any thoughts. No, but I have. Oh, God. You don't like them? They're brilliant. Well, why the long face? Look a real prat when you read all that out, and I've got twice the square root of bugger all. <laughs> no, Jimmy, I'm giving them to you. Eureka! It's nice to go out for a meal after all this time, isn't it? We used to have some nice... what? Eureka! We were asked to think. I have. I've had an idea. Good Lord. It's very Reggie. Very absurd. Well, what is it? Young age pensions. What? Instead of old age pensions. <laughs> That's brilliant, Tom. Oh? No, really it is. It's really stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you, Linda. Well, have I come on the wrong day? Bit of a cock-up on the date front? No. Well, where the hell is everybody? Oh, David and Prue are lingering over coffee. They fetched the rest of their stuff from Haverford West yesterday, and they're feeling a bit tired. Lingering over coffee, a bit tired. David, Prue, let's be having you now. Sorry, we had a long day yesterday. <laughs> I'll give you a long day yesterday. I'll give you a long day today and even longer day tomorrow. We're planning to march on Whitehall and take over the government, not have a picnic. Sorry I'm late. Traffic was terrible. Traffic? Terrible? I never heard anything so ridiculous. Sorry I missed the battle, Monty. Got behind a milk float at the Alamein Crossroads. <laughs> Start earlier. Yes. Sorry. <clears throat> and no yawning. This is a no yawning room. Uh, you did fall asleep several times yourself a few weeks ago, Jimmy. That was then. This is now. This is revolution. So sorry I'm late. Prawn Vindaloo. <laughs> Prawn Vindaloo? Prawn Vindaloo? What kind of excuse is that? I'll probably find Tom's late because he sparked in cauliflower chardonnay gave him wind. <laughs> sorry I'm late. Had a dinner engagement which dragged on somewhat. I'm so sorry it was a drag. It wasn't. I should have said we lingered by candlelight. You bastard! <laughs> 
I do apologize. I didn't sleep well. My sparkling cauliflower chardonnay gave me wind. <laughs> I'll give you wind before you're through. Sorry I'm late. I couldn't find the right earrings. Tricky little blighter's earrings. So I've heard, anyway. Little tip, Linda, from an old soldier. Try choosing the earrings the night before. I will. Thank you, Uncle Jimmy. <laughs> right. Oh, now you're all here. Where's Joan? Uh, she's not very well. Bit chesty, is she? I could go round and brush the cobwebs off my old instrument. <laughs> no, she is not chesty. It's nothing serious. So she doesn't need the cobwebs brushed off anybody's old instrument or new instrument, and especially not your instrument. <laughs> right. Now you're all here, except Joan. Ask for thoughts over the weekend. Had a few myself. Read them to you now to start the ball rolling. I'm not going to be too specific at this stage. I just want to lay down the broad parameters. Right. We must now set up a think tank to work out our strategy and a policy research unit to explore the policies that will implement that strategy. We must create a society that looks forward to old age, not back towards lost youth. We must replace youth culture with age culture. <laughs> <That's good>. <laughs> <laughs> Wrinkles should be deemed desirable. Baldness should be a privilege, keenly sought. <laughs> we need a completely new work ethic. Otherwise, people will simply become redundant younger and younger, and there won't be room in the Algarve for them all to play golf. <laughs> I look forward to a day when age and maturity are eagerly awaited and universally respected. I look forward to a day when women will lie about their age by discreetly adding a few years to it. That'll do for now, Jimmy. It's a bit vague, but it'll give them something to chew on. <laughs> Sorry. I shouldn't have read that last bit. I really must apologise for my deviousness. I really had no ulterior motive. I simply wanted you to respect Jimmy's decisive leadership. It's a tricky waller leadership. Uh, anyway, they were super ideas. Super. Wicked. Oh, thank you. Well, now I think we should throw it open to the floor. Any ideas? Uh, I do have the occasional flash. So I heard. <laughs> <laughs> little things, please, little minds. Yes, I heard it was little. <laughs> I shall ignore your childishness and tell you my idea. Young age pensions. <laughs> Super. Oh, wicked. Pensions from the ages of 18 to 28. Let them learn about life before they try to administer it. That's what I was going to say. I had that idea on Saturday. Well, we could all say that. How do we know you're telling the truth? The theft of invention is the mother and father of a lie. Oh, but he did. He told me it. Thank you. Too late, Tom, and too slow, bad luck. Ha, 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 You all like to mock Tom. He's an easy target. Well, I think he's worth ten of you. Linda. I love you, Tom. I realise now that's why I thought I hated you so much. Good Lord. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Oh, don't worry if you don't love me. I can cope. I'm not saying I don't love you. I'm saying I'm astounded that you love me and I'm trying to work out how I really feel, which is a matter of... Well, I suppose I'm not an impulsive person. I'm an estate agent. No, I just thought... Take that young man and his investments in Singapore and that bank that went bust. With my idea, he'd just be starting out. There would never be too much power too young. I just thought it was a good idea. I'm so it's caused so much trouble. Well, it hasn't. It's caused Linda to say she loves Tom. And anyway, it's a terrific idea. Absolutely. Young people are encouraged to be greedy by old men who sit back and exploit that greed. Uh, so I think we should say congratulations, Doc, and congratulations, Tom. Brilliant, both of you, and it doesn't matter who thought of it first. <laughs> bloody creep. <laughs> How dare you? How bloody dare you? David is trying to make peace because he's a lovely man. <laughs> Does anybody else want to express their love? Hank, do you want to tell us how deeply you love Joan? That Hank loves Joan, and that Linda loves Tom, and that Prue loves me. But I think the time has come to... Oh, and that I love Prue too. Nearly forgot, oh Lord. <laughs> but all this is a red herring. And we should forget red herrings and get back to the meat. And yes, CJ, I know I'm speaking your language. We must get down to choosing the members of the think tank and the policy research unit. Absolutely. 
Now, we need to separate CJ and Doc because they keep arguing. And we need to separate all couples because they waste time by being lovey dovey. So, think tank. Hank, Doc, Tom. Oh, all males so far, so Prue and me. Policy research unit should therefore be Joan, CJ, Linda, and David. Super. Wicked. <laughs> Wait a minute. I'm the only one not on anything. And I'm your leader. Well spotted, Jimmy. So got to be on one of the teams. And if only on one team, being leader, make that team seem more important than other team. Only solution me on both teams. <laughs> Super wicked. <laughs> Grateful for your enthusiasm. <laughs> He must have some ideas. I'm trying. I think the whole concept's wicked. I really do. It's just... I'm so tired all the time. Your apartment's so comfortable, Tom. I mean, Twelve years of being a whiz kid has left me really... really burnt out. <laughs> I'm worried that my flash may turn out to have been a flash in the pan. I'm beginning to wonder if I'm a think tank person. I know it was right in most cases to split up loving couples, but I'm not sure David and I function very well except as a team. Togetherness is our middle name. On our own, we feel naked. Smug cow. <laughs> You're very lucky. <laughs> Hard work, thinking. Deserve every penny they earn, philosophers. Not they earn much, poor bastards. <laughs> Somebody must have some ideas. I suppose it's because I'm so emotional a moment over Tom, but I'm in an absolute lather. Is anybody else too hot? <laughs> oh, well, it's just me, then. I do sweat easily. I have very open pores. We both do. <laughs> oh, Lord. I said we both as if we were still... Oh, Lord! I know it was right in most cases to split up loving couples, but I'm not sure that you and I function very well except as a team. Togetherness is our middle name. On our own, we feel naked. Smug bastard. Hard to work out policy when idle swine on think tank haven't sent us anything. But you are on the think tank. <laughs> oh, yes. Forgot. <laughs> Are you ready? Would you like to come in for a drink first? Oh. Two double radiators and four power points. Very nice. Are you nervous? Well, of course I am. I keep saying to myself, did she really mean it when she said, I love you? Of course I did. Did you really mean it when you said, I'm not saying I don't love you. I'm saying I'm astounded that you love me and I'm trying to work out how I really feel, which is a matter of, well, I suppose I'm not an impulsive person. I'm an estate agent. Well, yes, I suppose I did. <laughs> I'm not a very exciting person, am I? Cheers. Cheers. Mm -hmm. Tom? Uh, do you really want to go out tonight? What do you mean? We could just stay in. We could... We could go to bed. <laughs> I'm hungry. <laughs> I mean, that sounds very nice, but... Uh, very nice. But I'm hungry. I could knock something up. It, it sounds tempting. <laughs> but we booked. We could cancel. Well, yes, but... I don't like cancelling. It isn't really fair. It must be quite a struggle running a Greek restaurant in Camberley. <laughs> I mean, I'd love to go to bed, but... love to. But I do rather fancy a taramazolata and moussaka and... <laughs> Look, Lindy Plonks, I'm feeling very nervous. Why don't we just have the meal and then, after a nice night out, when we've built up to it and we're feeling amorous, then I think I'd rather like to go to bed with you. I mean... This is an important moment in our lives, Lindy Plops. Terribly important. We must be careful to get it right. Oh, yes, Tom. We must be very careful. Well, I suppose I am a carefulness person. C. 
CJ here. I have nothing to say to you. Right. Fair enough. Don't say anything. Just listen. I, uh, I, uh, it was unforgivable what I said to you the other evening. I, uh, I, I apologize. Oh. Well, thank you. That wasn't easy for you, was it? Nope. I didn't get where I am today by apologizing. <laughs> I imagine not. <laughs> However many dinners a man gives a woman, it doesn't give him the right to take her upstairs, slowly take all her clothes off, and give her a good seeing to. I think maybe I'm not a Greek dancing person. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I apologize again. Is it getting any easier with practice? Yes. <laughs> Truth is, I behaved like a square pig in a round poke. <laughs> Handsomely put. Thank you. Geraldine, will you come out to dinner with me again? Absolutely no strings attached, truly no strings attached. You're very persistent, aren't you? Well, yes, I am. If at first you don't succeed, then the mountain must go to Mohammed. That's my motto. <laughs> well... All right, then, but absolutely no strings attached. Well, shall we go to bed? Oh. Do you think it's wise with my knee? I mean, it, it's been nearly ten years. A, a, a few days more won't matter. I mean, why choose a moment when I've got a limp? A limp? What? <laughs> Linda. Oh, sorry, Tom. I forgot what a prig you are. <laughs> I'm not a prig, Lindy Flops. And I don't like being called Lindy Flops. Good night, Tom. I hope it isn't too late. It's never too late, but who is it? <laughs> it's Tom. Uh, don't sound so surprised, Tom. I know this will come as a shock to you, but I don't spend the whole of my life waiting for you to ring. Well, of course not. Geraldine, can I see you again? No. What? No. Please, Geraldine, don't be so hasty. Think again. Perhaps I was a little hasty. All right, I think again. Thank you. No. <laughs> I'm letting you down lightly by saying no before you get too involved. I'm kind and thoughtful and considerate. Now, why don't you try and reconcile yourself with that nice little woman you once married? I have. I'm going to offer an incentive. A bottle of my Mont 294 at 12.30 if we feel we've really earned it. <laughs> Well, anyway, despite that, I've had another idea. <laughs> Fashion shows. Oh, well done, Doc. But I think it actually has been done. For the over-50s. Modelled by the over-50s. Older people need glamorous clothes. Young people don't. Oh, very good. Well done, Doc. People could have face drops instead of face lifts. Oh, very good. <laughs> well done, Hey, uh, Jimmy? Hmm? Anything? Nothing at the moment. Working on it. I've had another idea. I've had another idea. Oh, fine, what, Tom. But Doc was just going to tell us his idea. Oh, I'm sorry. I was so busy thinking of mine that I didn't hear. Well, mine's such a corker. It can wait. You first, Doc. Age before beauty. Ah, but in the new order, we won't be able to say that because age will be beauty. Should I wake Hank? He shouldn't miss Doc and Tom's ideas, should he? 
You're part of the think tank, Hank. Oh, <laughs> yes, yeah, sorry, this is terrible. We would have let you sleep on, but Doc and Tom have had ideas. Tom's is a corker. We don't know where the Doc's is, but he thought of his first, so he's going first. Yes, and I feel nervous now. No, mine isn't a corker at all. I'd much rather Tom went first with his corker. No, no, you first. Oh, very well. Age hostels instead of youth hostels. That's all. Places where senior citizens can stay cheaply while they're out walking or cycling. I don't believe it. He's done it again. <laughs> He's stolen my thunder again. That wasn't your corker, was it? Yes, it was. And I feel embarrassed now calling it a corker. It wasn't a corker, it was just a silly, lousy idea like yours. And I'm just a bag of wind, a, a conceited twit. Here, here. <laughs> Sorry. It was a very good idea, both of you. So cheer up, Tom. It's all very well saying cheer up. You don't keep having your thunder stolen. I've a good mind to cancel my incentive offer of the March 294. <laughs> I think you should. Absolutely. You'd have to be a saint, constantly having your thunder stolen to offer us free wine. Mm. No, I can't be petty. I've got to learn to be a better human being. We'll have a bottle of the leek and potato as well as the manch too. <laughs> oh, do sit down. Memento of the olden days. I love nostalgia, especially for the past. <laughs> Coffee and biscuits, don't you? Oh, I love this view. The squirrels are such fun to watch. I love to see them nibbling at their nuts. <laughs> ah, dear Mrs. Wren, could we please have coffee and biscuits for four? Thank you so much. It's touching, don't you think, that such a very large woman should have the name of such a very small bird? <laughs> but these things are the very stuff of life, don't you think? Now, we've had a very good report from the think tank, don't you think? Super. They've done very well. I think I can see Tom's hand in a lot of it. And Prue's. I know I shouldn't say it myself. And yet, why not? Because I'm proud of her. But the lovely thing about Prue is, if you don't mind my being personal, but I have to say it, is... She's so sensible. Smug bastard. <laughs> I expect you contributed quite a bit, Uncle Jimmy. Well, you know, this and that. Idea here, a thought there, it all adds up. I don't think Hank had much to do with it. According to Prue, he kept falling asleep. Yes, he's a living example of what we're about. He's been used and discarded like an old sock. I didn't get where I am today by using and discarding people like old socks. <laughs> well, I did, actually, but not anymore. <laughs> He's climbing that tree. He is lovely. Well, grey squirrels are actually members of the rat family. So what? You're Welsh, but you're delightful. <laughs> I do wish you wouldn't make cheap cracks about the Welsh. I'm very sorry. I like the Welsh enormously, actually. They're witty, musical, and they cook seaweed beautifully. <laughs> I like Belgium, too. Beautiful cities, friendly people, wonderful food and beer. Why do certain people mock certain people? It's cruel. Ah, oh, my dear Mrs. Wren, you are a treasure. Hmm. Doesn't usually say things like that. <laughs> usually he says I'm a bleeding nuisance. <laughs> <laughs> what a wag you are, dear Mrs. Wren. <laughs> The salt of the earth, the dear Mrs. Wrens of this world, don't you think? Now, come and get your coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Humour, where would we be without it? <laughs> <laughs> now, any ideas about the think tank report? Well, yes. Uh, taking up Doc's idea of young age pensions, that I think people should start work at 28. Have maybe a 30-hour week to the age of 40, reducing to 25 till the age of 45, but at the same salary. 20-hour week till they're 50, 15-hour week to 55, 10-hour week to 60. Nobody ever forced to retire or made redundant unless they commit grave misconduct or go utterly gaga. Go on working 10 hours a week on half salary for as long as they're able. Work consistent with their physical abilities. Work using the judgment and knowledge they've acquired over a lifetime with no old age pension at all, and none needed, because there'll be no retirement or redundancy. What do you think? Super. Super. <laughs> Won't it be difficult to sell to the young? If I was young, 
I'd love to be paid to see the world for ten years. Besides, the young will benefit because time is the procrastination of thieves, and whatever they think, they are not immune to the aging process. Brilliant! David, you're really onto something. This calls for champagne! Oh, ho, oh, oh, ho, oh. ho! Bless it! It's crushing its nuts against the silver birch. <laughs> Do help yourself to biscuits. <laughs> that was lovely. I didn't actually think I was very sexy. Oh, I don't love you because you're sexy, Tom. I love you because you're slow and pompous, but kind and gentle. Oh, oh I see. I love you because you're you're comfortable, like a pair of old bedroom slippers. Charming. <laughs> yes, it is charming, Tom. Marvellous. When should we next be slow, pompous old bedroom slippers together? Oh, I do love you when you're grumpy. Mm. Good, I'm so thrilled. Will you marry me? What? Well, can we try again and see if we can do better this time? You mean... Are you serious? I mean, I thought we were just... Good Lord, you are serious, aren't you? Good Lord! I mean, I... I mean, this is so... Good Lord! <laughs> Things are going wonderfully. Yes. Tom and Linda are engaged. Yes, terrific. The think tank and the policy research unit are huge successes. Our strategies and our tactics are beginning to take shape. The date of the revolution's fixed and we can soon begin a huge recruitment drive. Yes, it's all tremendously exciting. <laughs> What's wrong, Jimmy? CJ. The blighter said how nice it was to see the squirrels nibbling their nuts. <laughs> he said what? Exactly. He was nice to his cleaning lady. He said he liked the Welsh and the Belgians. <laughs> the Welsh and the Belgians? <laughs> What's up? Exactly. He gave me champagne. I don't trust a bastard. <laughs> Nor me. You see, Jimmy, that's where your leadership comes in. That's where we turn to you. What for? Leadership. A decision about what to do about C.J. What sort of decision? A decision to have him followed. With you? Absolutely. My moment at last. I'll follow the swine. Oh, no. <laughs> no, Jimmy, not you. You can't be spared. You're our leader. If you follow him and succeed, fair enough. But if you're caught, you're discredited. If you send somebody else and they succeed, it was your idea. And if they fail, you disown them. <laughs> Sounds thoroughly dishonourable. Exactly. Leadership. <laughs> <laughs> Who should we send? Oh, somebody dispensable. Tom or David or both. Right. Made a decision, Elizabeth. Oh, good. Round the clock surveillance on CJ by David and Tom. Brilliant. <laughs> what would we do without you? Thanks. <laughs> the Empire Building continues next tonight on BBC One for Cecil Rhodes. Thank you.